Hey there, welcome to the Road Trip Companion Series. For the Caribou Chilcotin Coast, I'm Jason Ryle. Today we're going to explore Highway 24, commonly known as the Fishing Highway. There are dozens of lakes along Highway 24 you can check out, but today we're going to visit four different spots. We're going to check out Lac de Roche and talk to Luca and the family there. We're going to stop in at Egan Lake and visit Debbie at Free Rain Guest Ranch. We'll also check out Fawn Lake and we'll wrap up the day by stopping in at the Flying U Ranch at Green Lake. And then we'll get back on to Highway 24 and wrap up the day at the intersection, which concludes the actual fishing highway. What would a road trip be without actually hitting the road? Lac de Roche is one of the longest lakes that you'll encounter on Highway 24. At Lac de Roche, you can't help but notice Lac de Roche Resort. Owned and operated by Laura and her husband Luca, their resort also offers something pretty unique. An authentic Italian restaurant. Yeah, and I mean really Italian. Dishes made from scratch from recipes that Luca and Laura have brought back from their native homeland of Italy. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, Caribou Chicotin Coast. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Well, our resort is a typical resort of the Caribou. There are quite a few here, and I would say now they're all quite nice and uh, totally different from when I came over. There was lots of improvised people uh, 18 years ago, and now they're all professionally run, and uh, it's a market that pushes you towards that, but I, I gotta say, so a typical resort means uh, cabins. We have cabins with full facilities, uh, uh, which means kitchen, bathroom, uh, the whole nine yards, and um, RV spots, which are behind us, probably out of the camera range, but they're there. We're on a lake, and uh, our feature is uh, uh, an Italian restaurant. So um, we cook uh, traditional recipes uh, from the year I come from in Italy, which is Emilia Romagna. So typically ragu, bolognese, what they call uh, tortelli, tagliatelle, gnocchi, you name it, you know. And uh, traditionally cooked the old-fashioned way, like my grandma taught me, that's all. And um, the other feature for us and the area is the, fish the fishing. Fishing is, uh, I think, uh, I'm an avid fisherman and I fished all over British Columbia. Uh, rainbow fishing, lake fishing, this is top in, in British Columbia. Uh, we lack rivers, unfortunately, but uh, they're not far. They're like um, 40 minutes driving from here. To, and so we have the Thompson down the valley, clear water, beautiful rivers. We got the Canyon River. But if you want to stay close by, lake fishing, rainbow, brookies, lakers, coconuts, you name it, you'll catch it. <laughs> so when people come to your resort, Luca, um, it's, it, it, you know, on the drive in, it, it appears that it's set up not just for adult travelers in RVs, it's good for families. Yeah, um, um, our clientele goes from fishermen at the beginning of the season, say when the school is still on, as soon as school is out, uh, then uh, then uh, we have families. We have families because uh, um, the lake, we're 1,250 50 meters high, so more or less 3,600 feet high. So the lake is quite cold, but uh, from mid-July, mid let's say beginning of July until the end of August, you can easily swim because the surface gets quite warm and um, so family come and enjoy the enjoy boating canoeing they have lots of different things and of course they can go horseback riding they can rent uh, ATVs and all kind of things in the area so uh, yeah family when schools out are probably our main uh, main main source of business let's say mm -hmm. then uh, when you get into the fall again uh, fall is very beautiful for uh, for uh, fishing uh, we have fishermen back some hunters and uh, it's an area that it's uh, is um, even developing in some sort of way so we have lo lots of operations going and uh, uh, from logging to like uh, tree planting to like uh, other stuff and so we always have even a good amount of workers in the area and it's it's quite active it's it's quite nice a good variety. One of the other uh, unique things that you have here at Lac de Roche that I saw is that you have developed your own hatchery for fish. Yeah, it was a project we started, um, uh, oh, I would say, I'm here, I've been here 18 years, so I would say 16 years ago. 
uh, because we had to create a creek that was on the map, but it was on the land, you know. <laughs> so basically, we had to turn uh, um, um, a swamp into a creek. And as soon as we did it, we managed to do it with trenching and a long, uh, long process. Um, Rainbow appreciated, and they started coming up and breed. So it's a spawn and breed actually, and uh, we have a very high successful rate because uh, the, su the success of the of the breeding depends a lot on the rain in the spring. So aside from the last two years, which were exceptionally dry, as everybody knows in British Columbia. Um, we always succeeded. Uh, rainbows bred and actually hatched in the creek, and so we have a good population of rainbow in the lake, which adds up to the the, the stock in the stock in amount of fish that is the stock amount of fish that is in there. So, so in Lac de Roche, the lake itself, you've got rainbow and any other. We types? got rainbow and burbots. Burbots, freshwater lingcods, are uh, well known by ice fishermen mainly, but they catch um, they catch quite a bit even in the summer. Uh, mainly winter attraction, of course, because it's a classic fish. You want to drill a hole in the ice mm -hmm. and put a line down and wait. Uh, so <laughs> never beer in the meantime. But um, several species of rainbow. We have Gerard rainbow. We have uh, blackwater rainbow, Panask rainbow. And now I found out from the charts of the fisheries that they they stock the dragon rainbows. Never seen one. I don't know the difference. I know the others, but not those one. And the one that breed in the creek are the panask rainbows. Very, very beautiful fish. Very shiny and uh, and silvery and beautiful fish. Um, big fighters and and uh, and we got quite a large number. Not exceptional, exceptionally big, but yeah, but, uh, but <coughs> lots me. of them. Yeah. <clears throat> So when it comes to uh, people that love to fish, mm -hmm. if if someone's coming from, say, the Lower Mainland and they've never done that, is this a good place to get started? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You have, uh, first of all, we supply even the fishing guiding. So um, uh, there's Giorgio, he's been with us for a, for a few years now and he can uh, guide you out and fishing. He's an avid fisherman and quite experienced now. And um, it, it takes over basically what I was doing at the beginning. Part of my job at the beginning, actually most, the main part of it was guiding people out. I used to do it every day in the first seven, eight years of, uh, of our adventure in Canada. So then things changed and uh, I decided to, to focus more on the restaurant and uh, we do cappuccinos and lunch, as you can tell from the signs on the highway. But, yeah. um, but there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of demand for, for fishing and uh, guided fishing. So we can, they can go with a guide or I can and show them how to catch fish. The good things about this uh, this lake is that we have uh, a decent population of uh, what they call coarse fish, so squawfish, chubs, uh, and the shiners. And they're super fun to catch uh, when you're, uh, let's say, when you're an um, unexperienced, unexperienced fisherman. So mm -hmm. at the very beginning of your uh, fishing experience uh, it would be nice to start with that kind of fish because they're easy to catch easy to locate in the lake you catch all day you catch them in large number of course it's catch and release they're not good eating or anything but uh, it's fun you get acquainted with the fishing and then you can move on to the to the rainbow the rainbow have, uh, have they're pretty good but you have you need a little more experience to catch them yeah right yeah so, uh, last question I have for you yeah. Luca is uh, are you guys an all uh, all year all season resort yeah uh, like uh, many uh, we're year-round and uh, we have um, uh, of course the summer is for everybody and it's easy to, to see what we do in the winter, I have a specific clientele, which are ice divers, uh, ice divers, uh, so Navy divers from uh, from uh, Victoria, uh, the Army, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I have a big groups of American divers. They come here every year. It's a school, and they gather divers from all over the United States. And I got uh, hooked up to them by a Canadian. They used to be part of the group that came first. And uh, so in the winter, for like uh, three weeks uh, between January and Feb and the end of February, we have uh, a big tent set up in the middle of the lake. They go up and down and it's uh, very friendly, very open to even uh, show what they're doing. So if you drive by our place and you see the big tent, please stop by and I'll show you. Then of course, snowmobilers, ice, fishy, ice fishermen, uh, cross-county skier and um, snowshoers, there's, there's lots of it. We so have some good trails for that. So, so you're open to the public? Open to the as public. Well as having the, yeah. you know, the divers yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Tagliatelle. Oh. Tagliatelle? 
And um, this, the tagliatelle is homemade noodles, uh, they say here, and uh, the dough is made with uh, um, flour, uh, eggs, olive oil, and the color green comes from spinach. We make it red with the all natural ingredients, and we serve it in different ways. We serve with it with ragu bolognese, we serve it with, uh, with the sauce, uh, red sauce, uh, mushroom sauce, uh, we serve it with pesto, many different ways. And they go along with uh, tortelli, gnocchi, cannelloni, lasagna, you name it, we'll make it all traditionally done, all traditionally served. So it's, um, that's where we do things at Lacta Roche. It's molto bene. Molto bene, yeah. So come and enjoy a beautiful Italian meal at Lacta Roche. Okay, so we're on our way to Free Rain Guest Ranch. Like I mentioned, you have to turn off Highway 24 and the road will eventually turn to a dirt road. You follow it for three and a half kilometers and Free Rain Guest Ranch's turn off will be on your left hand side. And it looks like we're here. Free Rain Guest Ranch. Coming through the gates now. No parking. <laughs> okay. Uh, every lake that's on the fishing highway isn't necessarily a world-renowned lake. No. Um, you're located on, you, you are located We've on We've got a lake. private lake here. There's no fish. We don't stock it. But then, you know, we let our clients know if you if you want to fish, we'll send you to Egan Lake, Sheridan, Bridge, Lake de Roche. Um, and we'll send you to the folks who know their stuff when it comes to the fishing. So when it comes to the small guest list that you have, 12 people, mm -hmm. is that on purpose? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just because we want to tailor make their days to suit their needs. So we don't want to be herding cats. You know, you've got 30 people to get organized on a morning. You can't give everybody individual attention. So with three of us that ride, with 12 guests, the maximum group size that we ride with is four. And when it comes to the culinary uh, aspect of things while people are here, you mentioned it's full service. Yeah. What does that include? Um, breakfast, lunch, three-course evening meal. So we're not five-star cordon bleu, but we do good, home-cooked, everything made from scratch, tasty, hopefully fulfilling when you've spent a day on the ranch. People are pretty hungry. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, and and it, is there anything else about free reign that you would want people to know that aren't from the area or are looking for this kind of experience for the first time? Well, just if, if people are interested in horses beyond just sitting and being a passenger on one, if they want to get involved, learn about who they are, see the world, learn to interact with them and to speak horse, then this could be their kind of experience. Learn how to speak horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a conversation for another day. That, that sounds really interesting. One last question that I Go didn't on. ask, and that's a little bit of your history. How long have you been here, and how did you come to free reign? So I grew up in an English riding school, so I always had horses in my life. And then I went to uni, I built a career, I was living the city life, and I just felt miserable. So I took a year out, and I went to work in Colorado training horses there. And then after that, and then I spent six months here in Canada for the winter, and then I had to go back to work. And when I got back, rather than thinking, well, that was awesome and it's out of my system and i glad I did it, um, my brain started saying, I'm buying a ranch. But it was never the States for me. I, I fell in love with Canada and, and the people here and just, well, just this. It's beautiful, right? And then how long have you been here? Uh, 13 years. Yeah. 13 years and another 130 to go. Feels like a lifetime ago, but it went in the blink of an eye, I swear to God. I only just turned 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I feel like I turned 32 years ago yeah. and blink and it's 16 years has gone by. Yeah, I know. I do. I, I do believe you. It ain't still, slowing down for us, is it? In my head, I'm still 20, 25 years old. My body is... Stick yeah, with that. Uh, Stick with that. Going down. My body tells me <laughs> otherwise most days when I get out of bed. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. awesome, my boy. Thanks a lot, Debbie. No, Thomas. Sure. Thank you for stopping by. I'm sure. sure. On the round here. Yep. After climbing back in the truck and getting back on Highway 24, I made a pit stop at Fawn Lake Resort. I went for a quick walkabout to check it out, even though it was raining. And the rain hadn't really dampened the spirits of anybody that I talked to either. Have you been here before? Uh, last 23 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a great place. To, uh, we've been through three. This is our third set of old owners. How's that? Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. So, where's home for you? Uh, Burnaby. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right on. I had never been there before, and I found the place nearly full, despite the fact that it had been raining for days. They, too, offer a full lineup of services like RV sites, cabins to rent, boats and water toys to play with along with all your fishing gear, if you don't have any. I spotted a beautiful trail around part of the lake to a secluded viewing platform, which which I imagine gets you a front row seat to the birds, bears, deer and moose and the other wildlife that call that place home. I piled back in the truck and hopped back on Highway 24 and on to my next stop, which was someplace I'd been meaning to get to for quite some time, because I'd heard a lot about it from my fishing buddies, and that's Lone Butte Sporting Goods. Mark is the proprietor there, and is also a guide. When you walk in the store, it's not very big, but man is it full. There is so much to choose from, it's astounding. And Mark's knowledge of everything outdoors is absolutely amazing. I had a chance to chat with him quickly. Tell me about Lone Butte Sporting Goods. Okay, Lone Butte Sporting Goods. Uh, we purchased it 12 years ago. So this is our 12th year in operation as the current management. And uh, we built it up to a fishing and outdoor store. Uh, everything from hunting and archery. And we kind of specialize for this area. So it's not just sporting goods that you guys do out of here. You mentioned off camera that there's a lot more to the business. Too. Of course, of course. So we also do the guiding. So we do uh, a lot of the bigger lakes. We'll take people out for lake trout, kokanee, rainbow, and uh, we'll also do the ice fishing tours as well. So, yeah. So for people that are, you know, say watching this in the lower mainland or have never gone fishing. Exactly. Uh, is this the place for them to stop to get introduced to the sport? We can definitely help out on both sides if they want to attempt to go at them at it themselves. Uh, we can definitely get them started there. Um, we can also do it the other way where they don't have to buy the gear. They can just get us to guide them, so to speak. Okay. So sort of be a watchful eye and exactly. uh, not to provide the, the pun, gear but to be a guide and, and show them the right way exactly. and the wrong way. Provide the gear, the boat, and all the equipment. Yeah. Right. So people can come up completely. Exactly. You know. Uh, bear, no equipment, no boat, no nothing. Exactly. And you'll help them out. Exactly. That's cool. So, uh, so uh, how long have you been in business, Mark? 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. And what did you do before you... I grew up in Chilliwack, actually. I was a trainer by oh, trade yeah. down there. And uh, yeah, this was definitely a uh, different uh, uh, business uh, adventure for me. And uh, glad I did it. It's, uh, it's definitely a passion that I live and breathe every day, so... So when it comes to the, the concept of the fishing highway, how do you guys plug into that? So we are on the west end of the highway. Um, we, we definitely kind of know what we're dealing with for lakes and, and we kind of act as kind of a first stop for the resorts and the people going into the area, kind of giving them a heads up of what's going on and where the fishing's good and, and kind of provide some gear. <laughs> so without giving away too much, how do you come about that kind of knowledge? Is it just from being on the lakes or do hunters and fishers, uh, fishermen, do they stop in here and say, yeah, Hathaway's hot? We definitely use our customers' information as well, but we also, that's where the guiding business comes in. If we're talking about a lake and we've been on there ourselves, we can say exactly what's going on. And that definitely helps out our customers. With the hunting side of things, we, we do what we sell. We, we fish, we hunt, we do everything, right? So yeah. so if we're not out there uh, doing it, we definitely rely on customers as well. So. so for people that are out of the area or watching this at home, is there some place they can go to find out more information about the store? We have the website, so uh, our, we have a full online store and uh, we can definitely uh, provide fishing reports and hunting information online and, and uh, email and phone, and whatever we gotta do to help customers out. So what's your website? www.lbsportinggoods.com lbsportinggoods.com Cool. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. After that, I piled back in my truck again and headed west to my final destination for the day. And having never been there before, I really didn't know what to expect. The place is the Flying U Ranch. You turn left off Highway 24 onto the Green Lake Watch Lake Road and just follow the signs. It's pretty easy. Now... This is the oldest working dude ranch or guest ranch in Canada at 167 years old. Once you pull onto the property, it's like driving onto a movie set. 
People have been coming to the Flying U for over a century to horseback ride, to sleep in private log cabins, and for lodge dining with a fresh home-cooked meal. They even have a saloon that looks like it was pulled right out of a Clint Eastwood movie. I almost expected a gunfight to break out. The legend of the man that you want to talk to while you're at the Flying U is named John. He's the proprietor now, and he's in a bit of an enigma. Well, I didn't get a chance to talk to him while I was there, I talked to a few other people, both staff and customers. One guy I talked to had been there on and off for the past 20 years, since he was a teenager, and he had his teenage daughter with him. He said part of their reason for coming was because he wanted his daughter and the rest of his family to reconnect with the outdoors. You can find out more about John and the ranch when you check out their website at the Flying U, just the letter U, dot com. And then once you rejoin Highway 24 from Flying U, then you head west and you head towards the intersection of Highway 24, the fishing highway, and Highway 97. That's part of the Gold Rush Trail. That is another episode. And here we go. This is the actual physical geographical end to the fishing highway. This is the intersection of Highway 24 and Highway 97. I'm just going to merge onto the highway. And there you have it. We have now completed the Highway 24 or the fishing highway. Now there are a lot of lakes that we didn't get to today. Just off the top of my head that I can think of, there's Horse Lake that we didn't get to, Mahood Lake, Canham Lake, Decca Lake. Uh, there's a number of other lakes that are on Highway 24. Whether they're on the highway or just a short distance off, it's all part of the fishing highway. Some lakes are better than others when it comes to fishing, but it's definitely a place that's great for families, for people that are experienced fishermen, or if you just want to get away and get away from the rat race. One of the other things to remember is that the fishing highway is actually a circle route, and where that starts and stops, well, it's a circle, so it doesn't really start and stop anywhere, so, uh, but you can travel from Little Forts in the east on Highway 5, travel down south to Kamloops, from Kamloops over to Cash Creek, Cash Creek, up Highway 97 to the intersection of Highway 24, and continue your journey into the Caribouchelcoton Coast. So if you want to find out more information about exploring our region, head over to landwithoutlimits.com. And if you liked the episode that we shared with you today in the first of the Road Trip Companion series, all you have to do is like and subscribe below. Make sure you hit the little bell for the notifications so that when we upload a new episode, you get uh, you get notified. And make sure you read the description below. We'll put links for the different resorts that we visited today and also a link to landwithoutlimits.com down there as well. Until next time, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.